Hey guys, it's Dr. May. How are you? All right, so today we have a bit of a, a challenging topic for you. So make sure um, you're feeling kind of awake and focused and ready to go. Um, it's actually even a little challenging for me because the concepts um, can kind of twist your brain into a pretzel a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do my best to present it as clearly as I can. All right, so as you probably saw from the title of the video, it's about uh, making changes using behaviorism. Okay, so this is part of the middle path module. All right, so uh, here we go. Ah, oh, all right, sometimes it's a little cranky. All right, so the middle path module is about um, a few different things. Let's go here first. So the general middle path goals. Um, one is about identifying dialectics, so the D and DBT, right? So this is about, instead of thinking in very extreme ways, which is associated with emotional mind, learning how to kind of find some middle ground or to come to a higher truth instead of sticking with just polarities and dualities, okay? And there's another important dialectic that they often talk about in DBT, which is validation or acceptance and change. So on the one hand, you could accept yourself and others and your situation just as they are, but at the same time, use some strategies to change things and make them even better. Okay, so today we're gonna focus on the change aspects of middle path, okay? So making changes using behaviorism. So in about the 1950s, um, there were some psychologists that were behavioral psychologists, and they came up with different techniques to help shape the behavior of other people or even animals. and what they're doing in DBT is kind of introducing you to what those techniques are so that you could try applying them to your life and maybe some other people in your life. Okay, so just as a disclaimer, this is not a how-to guide on how to control people, but perhaps you're um, a parent or a teacher or in a relationship and some of these techniques might, you know, help to reinforce um, more positive behaviors in the person you're thinking about, for examples for here. Okay, so um, the goals of behavior change, right? So increasing the behaviors you want, okay? And there's three techniques we're going to talk about with that. So positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, and shaping, all right? And then on the other hand, um, it's decreasing behaviors that you don't want, all right? So extinction and punishment are the aspects there. So it's kind of like if you had a garden and you could either plant flowers or pull out weeds or both, okay? So that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to try to increase the positives and decrease the negatives and go over some techniques about how to do that. Okay, so um, this is a, kind of a, <laughs> a lot on this page, but um, let me just give you just an overview first before we go into detail on some of these different things. Okay, so starting in the upper left, right? So positive reinforcement. That basically means adding something to increase or encourage a behavior, okay? So in this example here, right? There's a little girl and she's holding a paper that has an A plus on it. So maybe studying was her good behavior. And she was rewarded or reinforced by giving given some treats or lollipops. So the treats were added to encourage or increase her studying behavior. So that's like the good behavior. Although in DBT, we try not to say good and bad because it's a judgment. And if we had a judgment bell, we'd be ringing the bell right now. Okay, so bottom left. So that's negative reinforcement. So that basically means something's removed in order to encourage behavior. See how this gets a little confusing? So let's say in that scenario, it says baby won't stop crying, parent gives baby pacifier, baby stops crying. So the crying is removed. So the behavior of giving the pacifier is encouraged or increased in the parent. Okay, so it's rewarding the parent for giving the pacifier because this, you know, the crying goes away. All right. So next, upper right, so negative punishment. So something is removed in order to discourage certain behavior. So the guy saying to his daughter, I'm assuming, I'm sorry, um, you didn't clean your room, so I have to take this toy away. So the toy was removed. So her refusal to clean the room is discouraged, okay? See how, see how this gets a little crazy? All right, so, but that's basically what that is. All right, so then positive punishment, um, something is added to discourage behavior. So here it looks like the mom is probably yelling at or nagging her son, right? And he's going, no, 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 like he doesn't want to listen to it, all right? So she adds the nagging 
and that discourages the boy's naughty behavior. All right, so, but don't worry, we'll, we'll keep fleshing this out, right? It's like, <laughs> okay. Um, so just so you know, vocabulary wise, in this context, right? Although we usually think of like positive is good and negative is bad, here, what they mean by positive is just adding something, okay? It has nothing to do with goodness. And what they mean by negative is subtracting or taking away something. So it doesn't necessarily mean bad. Right, so it's very hard to like clear that out of our mind because we're so used to thinking like positive, good, negative, bad. But here we're thinking like a plus sign, positive adding, negative subtracting, okay? I hope that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna go over um, the definitions in more detail and provide examples of each one so it's extra clear, okay? So let's start with positive reinforcement. All right, so basically that means it's something that increases the frequency of a behavior that provides, oh, sorry, hmm. It really should mean increasing the frequency of a behavior by providing a rewarding consequence. I should have read that more carefully first, okay? So, there, so this has to do with really, you really have to know the person in order to know how to positively reinforce them, right? So you have to know what feels good to that person. So, so for some people, it might just be recognition or praise, like, oh, that's a great job, you know, thanks so much for helping me, or something like that. You know, I really appreciate all the effort you put in, you know, thanks so much, right? That could be simple. Other times it might be something more concrete, like maybe, um, like for example, we have these behavior contracts where I work and if somebody, you know, behaves in a proper way, whatever that means to that person, maybe at the end of the day, they have an opportunity to do something that's reinforcing to them. So maybe if the person really loves music, they'll have some time to listen to their favorite music. Or if the person really loves to draw a color, maybe they'll have some access to adult coloring sheets and markers, right? But it has to be rewarding to that person because so, if someone doesn't care about coloring, it, it's not gonna help anything. It's like, who cares? <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that, right? So let's say you're working with your kid or you're working with a student or, or a patient or whatever, a friend. You know, you have to reinforce them the way that they wanna be reinforced, not just what you think is reinforcing, right? So you gotta do some validation, put yourself in their shoes a little bit, okay? All right, so let's do some examples. Um, all right, so Kayla, I'm, I'm gonna read it, although I normally don't like to read because I, I don't wanna be boring. But if I don't read this carefully and get it right, I don't wanna mix you up even more, okay? So forgive me for that. You know, in my other videos, I don't usually do this, but I plan this out carefully so we could clarify the, you know, the concepts, okay? All right, so let's start. So on the left, Kayla studied hard for her test and re was rewarded with a good grade. Later, she received a compliment from her teacher. So she'll study more in the future, so that behavior will increase, because she will expect the reward of good grades and compliments. Okay, so see how that, so when she, the more she gets good grades and compliments, the more she wants to study, right, in, increases the behavior. All right, on the right. So this is how you could kind of do it for yourself. You could actually reinforce yourself. So Colleen spent several hours on a Saturday cleaning her apartment and running errands. Afterwards, she rewarded herself with a cup of coffee from Starbucks. So Colleen will clean and run errands more in the future, behavior will increase, because she will enjoy following it with the reward of a cup of coffee, right? So that's, it takes a little discipline to make sure you give yourself the reward that you internally agreed you would do, but sometimes it could actually help, you, help yourself, right? Like give yourself a little treat after you do something that you're not necessarily in the mood to do, all right? Okay, um, negative reinforcement. So again, the negative means just taking something away. So something that increases the frequency of behavior by removing something negative or unpleasant. All right, so on the left, Diane took some Tylenol and after a half hour, her headache went away. So the behavior of taking Tylenol will increase as a result of Diane's experience of it removing her pain. Right, so you're increasing the Tylenol behavior because it's removing the headache, All right? Okay, next one on the right. So Brendan, a new father, started to learn that if he picked up his baby, he would stop crying. So the behavior of picking up the baby will increase because the negative experience of hearing his baby cry is removed. All right, hope this is kind of making sense, all right? All right, so shaping. All right, so shaping is just basically reinforcing small steps toward a goal, right? If we're trying to do something new, especially if we're trying to shift our behavior from something 
maybe like self-injury into something skillful, right? Sometimes it doesn't happen all at once perfectly, right? Or let's say, you know, you're learning a new instrument or you're learning how to play a sport or you're learning a new language. Like you're not gonna get it right all of a sudden. It's just not how things happen, right? But if you reinforce every small step toward the goal or, or if you do it for yourself, like just give yourself props and credit for making some progress, it helps, okay? Um, even like little kids, I remember watching a nanny episode, you know, and um, she told one of the moms, like, just let your daughter try to make her bed. Even if it's not tucked in perfectly, at least she's trying, right? Just tell her she did a good job and then she'll get better and better, right? So something like that. So it's like getting out of black and white thinking and remembering that all the little steps toward progress in the middle are important, okay? All right, so examples of shaping. All right, on the left. Andrea has a lot of anxiety about going to school and has missed many days as a result of her anxiety. When she went to school for two hours on Tuesday, her parents praised her effort to go for at least part of the day. They also praised her on Wednesday when she went for four hours. So see how that works? Like something is better than nothing, right? Down the road, we'd hope that she can get there a whole day, but at least if she's trying and doing a little, it's still better than nothing, right? So it's worth recognizing, okay? All right, on the right, so John has a lot of social anxiety and usually avoids gatherings where there's a lot of people. He almost turned down an invitation to his friend's birthday party, but forced himself to go and was able to stay for about an hour. His friend later congratulated him, positive reinforcement, for making the effort even though it was hard. Right, so see how that works? Like at least he did something. He showed up for a little. It was better than staying home all day. Right, see how we do that? Okay, so reinforcement gone wrong. Right, so we can use these tools just like everything, you know, for, for, for good or for bad, you know, and sometimes this isn't done on purpose. We just kind of accidentally reinforce things and it gets worse because we don't even know we're reinforcing it. All right, so here's just some examples like reinforce, reinforce unskillful behavior. So, one example um, that comes up with addiction is let's say enabling someone in your family who's a substance abuser by lending that person money or letting them stay in your house for free without rent. So it's allowing them to increase their substance abuse behavior, or at least keep it going, because you're, you're making it easy for them, right? You're, you're reinforcing them by giving them stuff that they want, which is like more access to funds and places to stay, and e it's easier to keep their lifestyle going, okay? So that's unintentionally reinforcing negative behavior or bad behavior. I don't wanna say negative because we're talking other negatives today, right? Um, okay, so in the middle, um, being really nice to your girlfriend and paying attention to her each time she tells you she's self-injured, right? So if every time you do like a target behavior and people start gathering around you and saying, oh my God, what's wrong, are you okay? Or oh, let me take you out, let me talk to you. That's gonna actually increase the behavior. So usually in DBT, believe it or not, if you didn't know this already, there's actually like a, a guideline that says that the therapist shouldn't be talking to a client within 24 hours of an event where they were self-injuring. So if the person calls you after they cut themselves, we're not supposed to really have a, a big conversation other than making sure the person is safe because otherwise having a big discussion is gonna reinforce the behavior. Like we would want the person to call us beforehand, right? And reinforce the fact that the person calls first for skills help. Right, so we wanna reinforce the right behaviors, not unskillful behaviors. Okay, so similarly on the right, so giving your teen whatever he demands after he yells, curses, and punches the wall. So guess what? If you give him what he wants every time he engages in that kind of you know, aggressive behavior, the aggressive behavior is gonna increase because he's just gonna learn that that's what I have to do to get your attention. So if you reinforce the person by asking, when they ask calmly, you know, by listening to the person when they ask calmly or reinforcing someone for telling you they have a lower middle level of emotions rather than amping it up to a super high level, you know, the person knows that they'll be listened to if they could say it in a calm way, right? Or, or say, you know, I'm a little depressed instead of being like, oh my God, I'm going to die, right? So we have to remember to reinforce, um, you know, the appropriate behaviors in others and not the extreme you know, problematic target behaviors, the unskillful behaviors. Okay, woo! So if we want to extinguish or decrease a behavior, 
or extinguish really extinction was really like extinct like the dinosaurs like trying to make the behavior completely go away so that's pretty much like withdrawing all the reinforcement and it might be done all at once and the person might still be trying to get the response they used to get right so if every time that guy was punching the wall and yelling and screaming at his parents he was used to getting his way the parents may have decided well you know what i'm not going to give him his way anymore when he does that so he might still keep trying to yell and scream and carry on to get his way for like a while because he's always used to that working and i'd be like well why isn't this working let me keep trying let me keep trying but after a while he'll realize you, you know what it's it's different now it's it's not working for me i, I gotta stop okay so we have to be really patient in that process especially it's like if it's a parent and a kid right you take the reward away from the kid he might freak out for a while but after a while the behavior might change and i'll talk about an example in a sec but so they told that um a behavioral burst when at first when you first withdraw the reinforcement the person like makes extra effort to keep trying to get it back so you have to be patient through that behavioral burst and wait for it to pass because it will pass you can't give up in the middle of it and just like start reinforcing again because then all your efforts gone okay and if appropriate, you could reinforce other adaptive behaviors in the, in the meantime, if that, if that works for that situation. All right, so let's look at an extinction example, okay? So Connor's mom decided that she was no longer gonna give him extra candy, even if he responded by crying. So let's say, you know, she got in the habit of giving him candy a lot just to keep him happy, and she realized, you know what, that's just not healthy, I can't keep doing that. So she decides to cut out the candy. So now he's like freaking out. He's like, I want my candy. He's crying, 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 you know, and it must be really hard for a parent to keep listening to that, right? The temptation is just like, all right, forget it. Here's a lollipop. What's the big deal, right? So let's say here, um, at first he cried even more, but after this happened several times and his mom stuck to her limits, he eventually learned that crying would not lead him to get candy. Once he learned this, he was able to calmly accept the disappointment when his mom told him he couldn't get any. And then his, meanwhile, his mom praised him for his ability to stay calm. So that's about like down here, remembering to reinforce other adaptive behaviors. So when he does do well in between, she has to recognize that positive reinforcement, okay? Okay, so punishment, all right? So punishment in general is a consequence that results in a decrease in a behavior, all right? So it's pretty much like, the mom, let's say the mom's wagging her finger at that boy and he did something bad. So she's maybe scolding him because she wants him to stop doing that thing that she thinks is bad or problematic, okay? Um, so it's important to make a punishment fit the crime, so to speak. It should be proportional to what's going on. And if you're really angry at the other person's behavior or like let's say your kid's behavior, it's important to wait till you calm down before you decide on the punishment. You, if you make the decision about what the punishment should be while you're in emotional mind, it might be too harsh of a punishment and it won't be fair and you won't be able to follow through. So if you need to cool off and say, we'll talk about it tomorrow, just do that. You know, like come to a wise mind first. Um, if you have a spouse, talk with your spouse. If not, just like think it over, okay? Um, and sometimes um, part of the punishment is a natural consequence of a situation. And we'll talk about that in one of the examples. So it means like the thing that naturally follows from doing a certain behavior. Okay. All right. If I drink way, way too much and I have a, a terrible hangover the next day, that's the natural consequence of that behavior. Okay. And it might lead me to decrease drinking because I can't stand the way that feels. See how that works? All right. So here's some examples. All right. So positive punishment. All right. So that's adding something in order to decrease a behavior. Okay. So Karen went out in the winter time without a jacket. She later paid the natural consequence of getting sick. So the sickness was added. Okay, see how that positive part? Next time the behavior of going outside without a jacket in cold weather will decrease, right? She's not as likely to go out without a jacket because she doesn't want that punishment of getting sick to happen again. All right, so negative punishment, that's taking something away, right? So Josh snuck out of his house on a weeknight to go to a party. After his parents found out, they punished him by not allowing him to hang out with his friends for a week, right? So the punishment's related to what he did because he hung, he probably snuck out to see his friends. And the privilege 
was subtracted, right? So if he can't see his friends, his ability to get together with them was taken away, subtracted. So Josh's behavior of sneaking out will probably be decreased after that because you know, his, his privilege of seeing his friend was taken away. Whew, okay. All right, so punishment gone wrong, all right? We usually think of punishment as something you know, more, more negative anyway. And usually they encourage people to use more reinforcement rather than punishment. But anyway, when does punishment go wrong? So if you put out an, an, an emotional mind, an unreasonably harsh punishment, it's probably gonna make the person feel terrible and you may not be able to keep it going. Like if Josh snuck out, you know, out of his room and you said, you know what, you're grounded for six months. That might've been way too harsh, especially if maybe it was the first time he ever did that. Okay. And you may not be able to even follow through with it because if it's, you know, it's too hard to manage. And after a couple of weeks, it seems really unfair. You might just back down. And now you, you don't look like you are consistent. Um, but even sometimes people give a reasonable punishment, but once the person calms down and they calm down, they, they stop, you know, making the person go through with it. So let's say, you know, Josh gets a week of punishment um, where he can't see his friends. But in a couple of days, he's in a good mood. His mom is, a good, is in a good mood. And she's like, all right, you can go out, forget it. All right? So it's, you know, you got to follow through. Even if things start to feel better, you have to use your wise mind. It can't just be driven by feelings. All right. Um, the other big problematic thing about punishment is that when you keep punishing someone, they start punishing themselves, right? And think about self-injury and some target behaviors, what that's all about. It's about punishing yourself because you feel like you're not good enough. So if you are giving a punishment, it's important to let the person know that you still value them as a person, that you're just punishing their behavior, that the sin is different from the sinner, so to speak. Otherwise, the person might really take it to heart and feel like, God, I'm such a bad person. And then they're gonna start doing to themselves what you just did to them, all right? So this is super important, all right? That's why reinforcement is usually preferred. Okay, but we'll end on a positive note for this behaviorism stuff. So be a good role model. That's a great way to help shape someone's behavior, right? And it's very subtle. It's just like living like a good inspired life, right? When you do the right thing and you show through your actions, you know, what the right thing to do is, other people see that. And they might be inspired to do the same, okay? So let's end on be a good role model. All right, um, ah, stop share. I hit the wrong thing. What can I say? Oh, here I am. Okay. So, um, like I said, I know this is a little challenging. It's a little hard to grasp. Um, feel free to watch it more than once if you have to, or just go to a section that's a little more challenging. Um, there's probably other videos online that illustrate some of these concepts too. So you could always look for that. Although I'm not sure myself of a particular one because I wasn't really looking for one. Um, but anyway, I hope this helps you and uh, stay tuned for some more videos next time. All right, have a good day, everybody. Take care now.